हेलो एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग आई एम डॉक्टर पुनीत दीक्षित न्यूरो फिजिशियन फ्रॉम कानपुर एंड टुडे आई विल टॉक अबाउट वीनस साइनस थ्रोम्बोसिस टू डेज बिफोर अ डे बिफोर यस्टरडे ट्वेंटी सिक्स ईयर ओल्ड मेल पेशेंट केम टू माय ओपीडी विथ कंप्लेन ऑफ हेड एक since last uh, five six days since monday and uh, uh, also history of vomiting and diminution of vision although he was asymptomatic prior to that but uh, these symptoms develop all of a sudden and uh, he also complained that uh, uh, Two weeks back, he had severe pain in his right ear, and for which he consulted an ENT doctor for that. And uh, he says that nothing to worry. And uh, after a week, patient developed these kinds of symptoms. When he entered in my OPD, uh, he find difficulty in walking because of. visual blurring when i examine that patient he has bilateral sixth nerve palsy okay so uh, prior to uh, two days before coming to my opd he meet some other doctor uh, who uh, who advise him for an mri brain and that mri brain was absolutely normal there is nothing to worry in that mri so that doctor prescribed him as a um, uh, considered that uh, it might be a case of migraine and he give medicine accordingly but as there uh, as the condition deteriorate he consult uh, another neurologist he wants to consult another doctor so he came to me and when i examine him uh, his eye examination shows papilledema so i offered venogram i said that you must go for a venogram so after a day he again came to my opd means yesterday he again came to my opd with that venogram and that venogram shows extensive venous sinus thrombosis so there is extensive clotting in his venous channel so how this venous sinus thrombosis patient present actually venous channel our brain fluid csf get absorbed in this these venous channel and if there is a clot in these venous channel absorption of csf get diminished and that lead to increase csf pressure increase intracranial pressure and that lead to headache vomiting and visual blurring due to papilledema also due to raised icp patient may develop bilateral sixth nerve palsy or sixth nerve, unilateral bilateral sixth nerve palsy so he he or she may present with double vision so uh, these are the symptoms in my patient also my patient have headache vomiting visual blurring and initial phase he also have papillary uh, double vision okay now what other presentation might be there suppose if you if you delay in making the diagnosis then due to uh, this clot the uh, venous flow get decreased because uh, obstruction is there ahead so uh, venous flow get decrease and if venous flow get decrease so there is diffusion perfusion hypoperfusion hypoxic brain injury or stroke like presentation might be there so initially patient present with headache vomiting and papilledema and if, suppose if you delay uh, in making diagnosis then patient may present with stroke or paralysis he may develop paralysis or clotting in the brain and suppose for if further 
you uh, you are not been able to rule out this disease then due to this increased back pressure and direct clot effect blood vessels surrounding blood vessels may rupture and lead to brain hemorrhage so patient may present with headache vomiting peritma that is ih presentation or if delay is there then he may present with stroke like presentation or brain hemorrhage type of presentation and in later stage encephalopathic presentation might be there in which patient is totally altered un unresponsive okay now uh, the second thing is what is the cause for all these actually cause may be inherited thrombophilia or acquired thrombophilia inherited thrombophilia are quite rare and suppose if it is present then patient need lifelong therapy lifelong treatment lifelong anticoagulation and the uh, causes in inherited is protein c deficiency protein s deficiency antithrombin and the second one is acquired thrombophilia in acquired thrombophilia uh, any condition which lead to increase estrogen level as if woman is there in woman if he if she take ocps or during pregnancy or puerperal period uh, the estrogen level increases and uh, it lead to hypercoagulability and this uh, and formation of these venous clot okay now uh, so causes may be provoked or unprovoked provoked means uh, there is a uh, some something happen and because of this patient develop these clotting so in provoke causes the causes is pregnancy in female and uh, infection as uh, in uh, my patient some ear pain also there but mri uh, didn't suggest any uh, uh, any infection to the brain directly from that side okay so but infection is also cause such as meningitis encephalitis brain db it may uh, they all may lead to clotting in the venous channel and uh, the other cause is brain trauma suppose head injury is there then again chance may increases now uh, cause so these are provoked cause now there may be unprovoked cause unprovoked cause means no identifiable cause is there so in unprovoked uh, so what i think that my patient is also an unprovoked so it's difficult to find a cause but uh, uh, even though uh, i still search for the cause in that patient okay so now suppose your diagnosis is made and you rule out the causes now how how will you treat this patient so for treatment Uh, in acute condition we generally i generally used to give clexin some uh, some other doctors also uh, used to give unfraction heparin but uh, i used to treat these cases with clexin 0.6 ml subcutaneously bd and uh, twice daily and uh, then uh, through bridging therapy i add warfarin and when inr uh, brought down to uh, two uh, brought down between 2 to 3 then only we uh, i stop this clexin and at that stage patient can be shifted to uh, uh, his or her home uh, from the hospital so uh, as most of the patient ask that uh, doctor up to uh, how much duration we have to stay in hospital so till your inr not reach to 2 to 3 and generally take around uh, 10 days to 10 to 14 days duration now how long you have to take treatment treatment is generally uh, given for 3 to 6 month in provoked cause means pregnancy or cns infection or trauma and 
the duration is 6 to 12 months it is higher in unprovoked cause where you didn't get any identifiable cause and suppose if inherited thrombophilia is there then lifelong anticoagulation is required okay and beside this if septic cause is there then you have to use antibiotic in antibiotic we generally use ceftriaxone vancomycin and metronidazole or dalacin okay so in this way these cases would be treated okay so that's all about this venous sinus thrombosis and uh, thanks for listening thank you